hot, hot summer in San Francisco is finally here. Time for some pumpkin spice. I'm sure you just feel wrong about that, right? Hey Sniffers, I'm Trace, this is D News. We got a question from Sydney Flowers asking, how does temperature affect your senses of taste and smell? And we were all immediately curious about the smell bit, so we looked into it. Firstly, we have to understand how the nose knows in the first place. In today's society, our olfactory system is used mainly to entice and intrigue. Things like tasty foods, perfumes, and colognes, they co-opt our sense of smell. But the nose evolved to reveal information about our environment, specifically stuff that we cannot see, hear, or touch. Smell tells us what's happening with our tribes and clans, tells us if food is safe to eat, and warns us of strangers or possible sexual partners. It can even influence emotional states and initiate recall of memories. It's powerful, to say the least. The nose is constantly sucking in air. You're probably noticing that right now. What's your space smell like right now? Think about it. What's happening is particles are physically entering your body and hitting specialized olfactory receptors. Yes, those particles are real. Yes, when you smell trash, you're literally inhaling tiny bits of trash. Or when you smell a pig farm, you're literally smelling, well, you know what you're smelling. These particles, or odorants, are volatile, which is science's name for something that gets into the air at regular Earth temperatures. Lots of things are volatile substances, plants, animals, they are definitely, but steel, steel ain't. Steel has no smell. Sidebar, seriously, metal has no smell. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I know what pennies smell like, unless you've gotten rid of them, like Canada, whatever, fine, nickels. But the smell is just a chemical compound on your skin reacting with the metal, and that chemical compound is volatile. Boom, and sidebar. Temperature can, of course, affect volatility. According to a 2003 study in the journal Drying Technology, pine trees release more odorous volatiles as they get hotter and drier. Mmm, pine smell. And another study in Food Analytical Methods rated how strong the smell of salami was at various temperatures, finding 122 degrees Fahrenheit was the yummiest, giving off the best odorants and particles. But that's not enough. We also have to sense when those particles are being given off. A 1998 study in physiology found humans can detect volatiles and particles in air with as little as four femtograms per liter. That is a decimal point, then 15 zeros, then a four. It's really, really small. The nose is a sensitive piece of evolutionary equipment, and like any sensitive equipment, it works better when it's in ideal conditions. The more humid air is, to a point, the better it traps these particles and lets them hit our olfactory receptors. Overly dry air doesn't trap and ferry those smells to your detectors as easily, and if you can't detect it, you technically can't smell it. This detection also decreases at high altitudes because the air is drier and sometimes there's just a bit less of it. Now that we're on the same page with particulates, volatiles, odorants, and olfaction, we've sort of answered our question, right? Sort of. Winter air is drier and therefore ferries less odorants and volatiles to your olfactory receptors. And colder temperatures mean fewer odorants and volatiles are coming off of trees and things sitting around your environment. So it's not that your olfactory system doesn't work as well the world just maybe has less smell in colder months. Let me paint you a picture. If you were to sit outside in your front yard and drink hot apple cider or a pumpkin spice latte in a hot, humid environment, there would literally be more smells in the air. So the nutmeg, allspice, star anise, and so on would meld with the grass and soil and flower pollen. It's weird to think about it that way. But in the fall, we still get all the smells from that hot beverage. Its temperature is the same, but the world is colder. So we may only detect some of nature's smells, not all. The final answer does seem to be your sense of smell is basically the same, but it works best when the air is warm and even better when it's a little wet. When air is cold or dry, there's just not as much smell to smell. Thanks for your question, Sydney. The thing is, every time you do suck in air and particles and odorants, you're also sucking in microorganisms. And some of those could be dangerously interesting. I've been watching Monsters Inside Me on Animal Planet Go, and I have to say, the weird computer animated microbes and crazy infections are super addicting to watch. Check it out as well as all of the other shows on Animal Planet with the Animal Planet Go app, free in your app store. Knowing what you know is about the schnoz, what do you think space smells like? Maybe you can guess, but you should probably just watch this video to be sure. But when they get back inside the airlock and take their helmets off, the star stank clings to their suits. And there have been a couple different comparisons depending on who you ask. NASA's Kevin Ford said his spacewalk smelled like nothing he's smelled before, but he'll never forget it. Don Pettit, an astronaut aboard the ISS, was a little more descriptive and described it as a sweet, pleasant metallic smell. 
What's your favorite season for smells? Obviously, you may have already guessed I love fall, but let us know yours down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the D news, and we'll see you next time. Hi, Dana. <laughs> guys, Dana. Hi, everybody. Dana, guys. So, Dana's our intern. She's been awesome, and today's her last day. So, I'm gonna say bye, Dana. Everybody say bye. Dana went through all of our like footage and went through like 3,000 clips, did all sorts of stuff. Now, she's gotta go back to school to be a marine biologist. You're awesome. Thanks, Dana. Thanks, Chase.